in the same speech class, it's a given that we all speak the same language. Language is the foundation of communication. Without it, our thoughts would never be more than just thoughts, ideas, and concepts that only live in our minds. Language is more than the words we speak. It's all around us, from advertisements to the road signs we read or sometimes don't read while we're driving, even to the music that we sing. Words are everywhere. Now imagine your life with no written language. Imagine your favorite song with no lyrics, your favorite book with no words, or your phone with no buttons to text, and no way to write your own name. This would drastically change, if not totally alter, the way we go about our daily lives. I would say that it would take an incredibly intelligent person or persons to write an entire new, entirely new writing system based on a language that has only been spoken. No one would expect one man, mind you a man who wasn't literate in any language, to complete such a task on his own, but Sequoia did just that for the Cherokee people and his legacy goes on today. Although I do not speak or write fluently in Cherokee, I can speak a few words that I've picked up um, growing up. And um, among some of those words include my name that was given to me by my grandfather in Cherokee, whose second language was English. Growing up, I never fully realized the influence Sequoia had on my life until my parents took me to visit Sequoia's cabin this past summer. It was then that I realized the genius that he was and the significance of what he had accomplished. Today I'm here to tell you a story about a man who took the life lessons, experiences, and his passion for his people to create a path of advancement for the Cherokee people. No one knows the exact date of his birth, but Sequoia is believed to have been born in the, in the 1700s in Tuskegee, Tennessee. His father, George Giss, or Guess, deserted both him and his mother before he was born. Some believe that he was named after his father, but um, which is customary for the baby of a um, white male to be uh, named after his father. His English name was George Guess, like his father. While others believe that his, he was named after George Washington because his birth coincided with the Res Revolutionary War, and Washington was very well admired by the Cherokee people at the time. Sequoia grew up surrounded by war and conflict. He woke up many days with the sounds of gunshots in the background from either Americans fighting against the British or Indians fighting against Americans. Like most kids of Cherokee, of the Cherokee village, he was raised by his uncles, as well as the other leaders in the village. After the assassination of his uncle, Old Tassel, along with the other chiefs, Sequoia and his mother fled to the forest where it was safe from the raids. They, with fellow Indians, eventually came out of hiding and rebuilt their village, Sequoia still being a small boy. Although the memory of his uncle's death and the fact that he was deserted by his, pro his father probably gave him a mistrust and resentment towards white people, he realized they, although he realized they had a certain power in their ability to read and write. Since Sequoia did not attend school, most of the lessons he learned were learned from his elders and from his experiences. As a young boy, he enjoyed listening to stories that the elders would tell by the fireside. When a medicine man came and told a story from beads, he was fascinated. One day, while hunting, he and some friends came across a group of white hunters. Because one of them spoke in Cherokee, they began to read a book to Sequoia and his friends. He compared the stories by... He compared the stories told by the beads from the medicine man with the story from the book, and he was fascinated by all the words the book contained. So he later went on and bought his own book, although he did not know how to read. 
he called the book pages, which he, as far as he knew, were leaves. Um, he was cur curious about the talking leaves, but he went and uh, after he received the book, he spent many hours and many days studying the book. Because he was physically handicapped, he spent most of his time inside thinking about and, talk, and studying about the talking leaves. Sequoia realized that his people lost things they learned because they had no way of writing down and preserving their lessons. Sequoia did what no other man at the time has done. He created a chart of syllables that are used for speaking Cherokee, and he took that spoken language and made it into something that was written.